Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 45 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and the internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have back on the show as our special guest, Ed Featherston. Ed is the Vice President and Principal Architect at Cloud Technology Partners and in this week's show we'll be talking about that Jack May, the co-founder of Chinese tech giant Alibaba, who is now retiring as its executive chairman next year, has set his eyes on the largest internet economy in Southeast Asia, which is Indonesia. Mr. May told reporters that he wants to set up a Jack May Institute to train Indonesians on in e-commerce and the internet. Hi Dave and Ed, a warm welcome to you both. It's great to have you back on the training show and welcome back Ed, great to have you back. Uh, thanks for inviting me back, Brad. I always enjoy chatting with you and David. It's great to be back, and it's great to have Ed back on the show. Uh, it certainly is. Certainly is. The, the happy family is back. Uh, well, I'd like to open up with a, a question for you, David. Is Will this training boost allow other nations to catch up with the cloud? I think that's the, that's the understanding. I think there's some uh, selfish aspect to this, um, you know, being the fact he's resigning from Alibaba. I'm sure he's going to hold a tremendous amount of stock. I, I guess, as is the Chinese government. And so the idea would be we're trying to create a market. And, you know, Amazon, we've talked about them, you know, working with community colleges and basically investing a lot of training in some of the high schools and getting people Amazon certified. And I think what he's doing here is said, we're not going to even worry about uh, Alibaba certification or we're just going to focus on some of the basic internet uh, skills and getting people up to speed on that stuff. And you, the thing is, they have the infrastructure. The internet has come to in Indonesia. Uh, in fact, I think they have one of the fastest mobile infrastructures going, where you know, kind of like 5G are, is already working there and, and supplying people with different internet capabilities. And so their ability to kind of move into that space and create businesses and get employees and you know, support the emerging markets there, support China, Japan, um, uh, Singapore, even Australia, uh, and really kind of build the economy there, you know, we'll kind of take things to the next level. I mean, Indonesia could be the next, you know, explosion going on in the space, even more so than they are currently. What do you think, Ed? No, no, ab absolutely. And I think if it fits with, with the direction that Jack Ma was going with Alibaba to begin with in any ways in that the Asia Pacific region in general is just a huge potential from a business perspective in any of the electronic internet, e-commerce, cloud environments. And build, building that technical skill set for the people in those areas just helps lay the groundwork for being able to grow that environment and grow that infrastructure. Like you said, Amazon and Azure and Google all are working with all of the community colleges and other colleges here in the US to help build those skill sets here to keep growing things, but uh, from the Asia Pacific perspective, they've, they've been trying to break into that marketplace uh, with various levels of success, whereas Alibaba and Jack Ma basically own that side of the world as much as Amazon and Azure own this side of the world. And I, I, I see this as just a continuation of his perspective of that's where all of the power is going to be coming is out of that region. And so invest in that and invest in the growth there and everything else will fall. Yeah, I like the fact that it's not just investing, but it's actually putting uh, training in place to get people up to speed on the technology. It's one thing to throw money at universities and, uh, right. you know, get things up and running and, and not necessarily direct where the funds are going, but, you know, the ability to kind of directly affect people by creating an institute, getting the trainers on board, you know, really kind of controlling the message that goes down. And I think that it's going to be a combination of training but obviously, it's going to be uh, you know leading to leveraging technology that's easy to uh, acquire native technology such as Alibaba technology versus the U.S.-based cloud computing companies. And I think that's okay if you pay for the institute. Yeah. Very much like Amazon, you're, you're going to go right. ahead and teach them what you sell, right? Right. And, and the other thing that I think that it, it, that I hope is going to come with it, and, and I know Amazon does it somewhat also. You, you and I have both talked before about that. It's not just the technology, it's getting the culture to adopt to the new levels of technology, especially in the cloud environment. And if the training is also helping to 
level set the people into this is what that environment is like. This is the culture of developing in that cloud environment. It's not the way the old development used to work. It's a completely different model. It's a completely different mindset. If you have a workforce that's already trained into that attitude, it's a much easier move to grow that environment because you've got the culture already built in instead of having to try and reset everybody's expectations. Now, one of the things that I, I thought was uh, kind of interesting was kind of using this as a use case, you know, for the rural areas of Australia, the rural areas of the United States, you know, that the internet really hasn't come there yet. And now we have 5G that's supposed to be pervasive soon, our ability to kind of get broadband down to the businesses and down to the individuals um, to, in essence, finally get them connected. You, you, it's hard to believe when you, you travel to the more rural areas of the United States, they just don't have the connection. Sometimes they have satellite that has its own limitations, things like that, but the ability to have cheap bandwidth accessible and the ability to kind of leverage it as a commodity within your community you know, something Indonesians are getting are, are getting used to right now. And so wouldn't this be kind of a, a same, similar kind of model that we take to Appalachia, that we take to uh, the rural area in the flyover countries, that we take to, you know, some of the um, more wilderness areas and, you know, that where there's scarce amount of people, but the reality is they don't have connectivity and therefore they don't have access to high paying jobs, access to technology will kind of change their life access to technology allows you to set up a business virtually and do all the things that are kind of magical that uh, the internet provides. And it seems like we should probably replicate this here in the States, uh, the rural areas of Australia, um, you know, the rural, rural areas of Europe. Uh, it just seems like something that should be done. Uh, I, I think that means you raise a good point. I think that makes great sense. We, uh, most of us that tend to be in the urban areas all the time trying to take for granted of always being able to be connected. And like you said, there are still plenty of places in the U.S. and in Australia that that is not a given, that you know, having that connectivity is spotty at best, and you lose out on a lot of the capabilities and services that are available when, when that happens. So I, you're right. I think applying that model in those areas could be a big boon to everybody. Um, no, I, I think you're both spot on, and I, I think not only from a point of view of, of from a small business, but from a, a connectivity of communities as well. It's strangling communities where people can't sell property, people can't, you know, don't want to buy property. You know, communities are actually dying based on the the, the lack of infrastructure when it comes to technical ability. You know, and it, and it's making you know towns and townships and communities divided completely and and non-existent almost because uh, it's almost like the the gold rush where the the gold suddenly is gone and you know these these communities that had tens of thousands of people, six or seven schools, three or four banks, they just go. You know, they're ghost towns pretty much. Uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere where where no one really wants to go there because the 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 commodity of the time, the gold, isn't there. And you know, there's a similar thing now in a modern day where the, there's there's no infrastructure for technology. It's it's killing those communities and it's a it's a real sad shame really that you know in some respects Indonesia you know is sort of surpassing uh, companies that should already have that infrastructure there isn't it yeah it, it is and and I think it's funny it's like the United States we have a tendency to be behind because we were ahead uh, so we built existing infrastructure kind of first to lead in the wireless market in the wireless data market uh, but uh, ultimately you know we were left behind by uh, Indonesia and lots of other companies that basically built their infrastructure around wireless only. So they didn't worry about you know landlines and things like that. They just went ahead and uh, jumped directly to high-speed wireless technology. You know now we have 5G that's coming up, and the certainly the um, you know the, the cellular companies are talking that up. But it's going to be you know kind of the first protocol that's designed not to communicate to phones as much, but to communicate directly down to routers within buildings and bring massive amounts of data to people that couldn't receive it before. And, and I think that's going to be a game changer. And it's going to be interesting, to your point, to watch the cultures change uh, within these communities as this capability comes in there. And I think that, you know, living without the internet, and it was as much of a distraction it is, we can get into the you know whole addiction of it. But the reality is you kind of need it to get things done these days, need it to get information, need it to trade online, need it to do your banking, need it to, you know, pay your mortgage uh, is going to be a limitation that can't be tolerated anymore. It's just it's it's almost like electricity and water. You know, maybe I'm making too much of that. But Ed, do you agree yeah. with that? Or? 
No, I, I, I think it, you're, you're making a good point, and it kind of fits to uh, earlier conversations we were having around the public sector and the government providing services in the cloud and everything. If there are large portions of the country that still can't get those services because they don't have the connectivity, then they are basically running as second-class citizens. They don't have access to the same services that somebody that has access to the internet in the urban communities do, even though those services are, quote, universal because they're on the cloud they're not universal if people don't have access to the cloud where they're living yeah i, I think it's going to change a lot in the next five years and that's probably going to be most um most and I, I blogged about this last week in infoworld talking about the rise of 5g and how it's going to basically affect the cloud computing market and i think it's going to be the most systemic change in what we're seeing not necessarily with the cloud computing stuff available um, you know, I remember one time, uh, you know, speaking at, in a rural area around cloud computing and, you know, I got through my presentation and one of the guys stood up and he goes, uh, why don't you come back when we have internet connectivity? And uh, <laughs> I, I just didn't realize that that was, you know, that was an issue there. Well, those folks were chomping at the bit, they're loyal to where they live, yet they just don't have the infrastructure to run businesses. The internet connectivity via the satellite was way too expensive for most of the small businesses, but also, People that want to get jobs and work remotely and you know do all the things that we're doing these days, I mean, those capabilities can be there as well. So I think it's a cultural change coming forward, and we're going to have to see some of these sorts of uh, uh, basic training capabilities that go in there, how to use the Internet, how to use e-commerce, what cloud computing is, you know, how to set up businesses online. Uh, you know, all these sorts of things that are really going to allow things to take off. And we'll see these rural communities that, you know, quite frankly, um, we're dying to, to Brad's point, you know, suddenly take off like a rocket because they're able to, in essence, grab a hold of economy that they weren't able to do before. What do you think, yeah, Brad? Like, yeah, absolutely. Hit the nail on the head, Dave. I think you're right. I think once there is that capability in these smaller communities, they could well, very well populate again and, and people, could, you know, could... Uh, um, you know, appreciate the modern world again <laughs> and uh, and appreciate all the things that we, like you, both Ed, Ed and we've all said, that we, we really take for granted in a, an urban area. I think it's something that, you know, they're, they're going to find they can be educated in a in a new world or a new technology that they can fully embrace. So I think it's a very, a very good thing. I think you've, you've covered that very well. Yeah, I think it's probably uh, uh, very uh, uh, advisable that we go off and buy some real estate in some of these areas and we can make a killing <laughs> in the next five years. So uh, there's always a greed factor to this, isn't there? There certainly is. <laughs> and it's right. I mean, a lot, a lot of people go and sort of, you know, second guess where the next train station is going or the next airport and, and buy land there. But, yeah, you could very much be right. You know, I think uh, the, the, the older small towns are uh, the areas where infrastructure is penciled for. They certainly would become a lot more desirable. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. When, when you mentioned train stations, as David was talking, I was thinking about images of the, the stories back in the old west of the U.S. when the the rails were being laid and how towns just atrophied if the trains didn't come through those towns. And then when we had the highway systems built in the 50s, that, you know, there were whole towns and areas that just withered and dried up because the highway didn't come through or they didn't have an off ramp into their area. And I, I think we see the same kind of thing with the internet access that you have these rural areas that are, you know, living out in the desert for all practical purposes and don't have access to things that we take for granted every day. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Ed, Dave, thanks for being part of the show. It's been an awesome show this week. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. We've covered so much in the training show. I hope, uh, I hope everyone that's been watching or listening to this has enjoyed it. So thanks, Ed, for being back on the show this week. And thanks again for inviting me. Like I said, I always love chatting with you and David. It always makes for interesting discussions and I always learn something new. Fantastic. And thanks, Dave. Thanks for being part of the training show this week. It's always great to be here and it's a pleasure to have that on again. Glad to have him here. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for watching, everyone. If you've just tuned into the training show, then that's great. So remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. But remember to check out the Australia show as well uh, with Ed Featherstone and also the C-Suite show with Ed as well. So there's, we've done three great shows this week. I'm, I'm really pleased that we've got some great content together. Uh, you can connect with Ed on Twitter, which is at E Featherstone. Uh, David's on Twitter, which is at David Olympicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Standard, all the links are in the description 
description box below. As I say every week, we're also on Instagram, so remember to connect with us there, uh, and Facebook and all the other standard places. So, yeah, check it out and see what your thoughts are, and, uh, yeah, stay tuned for next week. Thanks for watching.